Welcome to the Gymnase Nicole Oba in Brazzaville, Congo for Olympic Channel's coverage of the final day of the AFBC African Boxing Championships. I'm Rory Jawani. 13 gold medals to be awarded, 10 men's finals, followed by three women's finals here in Congo. And we're just underway in the opener. It's the light flyweight division, 46 to 49 kilograms final between Matthias Hamaniela of Namibia in the red against Fotsala Simplice from Cameroon in the blue, the second seed. Early stages of this one. Simplice in the blue on the attack. Second seed. And already some good punches being landed. Simplice getting through. Against Hamuniela from Namibia. Simplice said the second seed defeated Tuareg Mohamed Yassin of Algeria on points yesterday. Unanimous points decision in the semi finals. Hamaniela in the blue from Namibia. He defeated Shafi Bakari of Kenya. Also a unanimous points decision. A minute gone in the first round. Simplice having the better of the early exchanges. Simplice, largely the aggressor, trying to push his man back, and he's succeeding there. Caught him with the right, solid right there from Simplice again. The Cameroon corner looking a little anxious, but the man started pretty well. into the second half of round one. A couple of shots to the body from Hamaniella. Good right from Simplice. But a good left through the guard there from Hamaniella. Hamaniella doing a good job now of avoiding these punches from Simplice and landing some good counter shots. Promising signs for the Namibian after a bit of a shaky start. Referee has called for a break, and there's a shot landed after the break. Hamaniella in the red against Simplice in the blue. The first of ten finals today in Brazzaville. Good body shot there for Hamaniella. Lands with a hook. Ten seconds left the opening round this first African Championship final in Brazzaville the light flyweight division there goes the bell the end of round one the fighters touch gloves after the closing bell difficult one to score there simply say started brightly but as the round progressed Hamaniella started to get out of the way of those punches and land some good counter shots of his own Stadium not at its fullest so far, but I should think it will be pretty full later on. Congo with one fighter in the final, and that's the heavyweight division coming up near the end of the night. Laurie Yannick Pembo Abeka fighting in the heavyweight final against Morocco's Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda, the defending champion. That's something to look forward to later. Back with the first final of the afternoon. There goes the bell for round two. Matthias Hamaniella in the red from Namibia, up against Fotsala Simplice of Cameroon in the blue. Simplice on the attack, lands well. But Hamaniella gets away from the ropes just when he looked like he might be pinned in. But Simplice getting through again. Good bright start to round two from Simplice. And a good left from Simplice, sent Hamaniello back, but he responds. Just for Simplice getting the upper hand here. Good left on the counter for Hamaniello. He's just leaving himself a little bit open. The 
again, the fighters not responding to the call for break from the referee. Say missing with the uppercut start of that exchange. Nothing conclusive landing. Simply say Southpaw starts leading with the right. Seems to switch back to Orthodox now. Very Straight line fighter, Simplice just comes forward. Oh, There's a good right from Simplice there. Hamaniella tries to land, but Simplice responds with the harder shot. Just over a minute left in round two. Body shot from Simplice lands. Simplice has got his man against the ropes. And that's going to be trouble for Hamaniele. His legs are a bit wobbly. He's just escaped. The Simplice could be moving in here. Hamaniele holds on. Buys a bit of time. Simplice's corner getting quite animated. Simplice say backs up Hamaniella again. A couple of good strikes straight through the guard. 30 seconds to go in round two. Simplice say definitely having the better of this round. Try to set him up for that right over the top again. Ten seconds to go in this middle round. Good right over the top there from Hamaniella. As simply say missed with the attempted uppercut. End of round two. Good shot landed on the bell there from Hamaniella as well. But I think simply say had the better of that second round. And for me, he's in front at this stage. And this light flyweight final in Brazzaville, Congo. First of 10 finals, 10 men's finals of these African boxing championships. That was where Simplice had just got on top and Hamaniella had to almost run away. His legs looked a little bit wobbly there, but he quickly recovered. And did land a couple of good shots at the end of the round, but the number two seed, Futsala Simplice, in the blue corner. Looks to be in front. About three minutes to go to decide who will win the first men's gold medal of these African boxing championships. There goes the bell for round three. Amaniella trying to use the jab. And a good left hook there. And a good combination from Hamaniella. This is what he probably should have done from the start. Try to get on his bike a bit more, and he's having some success. Good combination landed at the end of that exchange. Simplice landed, but Hamaniella coming back in kind, really turning into an exciting last round. Simplice goes in pursuit of his man. A couple of punches taken on the gloves there. But Simplice now on the attack. A real throwback head down fighter, Simplice. Got through the guard there with the left. Couldn't really follow it up. couple of meaty shots landed by both men there and I think Hamaniella was left a little bit wobbly there simply say again sheer work rate Hamaniella gets off the ropes but simply say again getting through it's 
relentless this man from Cameroon just keeps coming forward lands a left as well a minute to go in round three Amaniela's footwork not quite as sharp as it was at the start of the third round it looks a bit tired wild right from Simplice full short of the target We're into the last 30 seconds of this final round Cameroon's Foxala Simplice in the blue looks to be just on top in this encounter but Matthias Hamaniella of Namibia in the red landing a couple of good shots Simplice keeping on pressing forward he's picked off there by Hamaniella Simply so tries to bully him against the ropes. Hamaniella escapes once more. And there goes the final bell. Good contest to start off the afternoon. And the Namibian corner look happy. And they look the happier of the two. Had a couple of controversial decisions yesterday. One in particular. Interesting to see how they score this one. Into the middle of the ring and we await the decision. Five judges at ringside. Goes to Matthias Hamaniella. A unanimous points decision for the man from Namibia. I thought it was pretty tight and I thought Simplice's work rate might have won it for him. But Hamaniella, the jab and arguably the superior boxing skills coming out on top. And he is the African light flyweight champion. Namibia's first gold medal of these games. Katsana Simplice applauds the crowd. I can't believe there would have been much between them on the scorecards. And his victory for Matthias Hamaniella in the first fight of the day. Time for the second fight, the second final of this final day of the African Boxing Championships. The top seed and defending champion, Mohamed Flissi from Algeria, quarter finalist at the Rio 2016 Olympics. There he is, the Algerian, 27 years old, and he fights Otakiche Rajab Mohamed of Botswana. Flissi, the hot favourite for this one. All Africa Games champion, world silver medalist back in 2013. Bags of experience, bags of ability. Been there, done it. And now goes into the ring to try and retain his flyweight championship, his African flyweight championship. There's the challenger, we could say. Or to Kiche Rajev Mohamed of Botswana. Caused a bit of an upset yesterday, beating the 2015 All Africa Games runner up, Sankuru Nkolomone, and the Democratic Republic of Co Congo. Nkolomone lost to Flissi in that All Africa final two years ago, actually held here in Brazzaville. To reach here, Flissi, comfortable points win over Marco Jerome, Andriana Rivello of Madagascar in the semi-finals yesterday. Algeria against Botswana in the second final of the day. Your referees, Vilmantas Bobinas from Lithuania. Just had their final instructions to both fighters. We're underway, first of three rounds, three minutes each. Flissi in the red, the defending champion, up against Rajab Mohamed in the blue. Flissi occupying the centre of the ring and already getting through with a couple of shots.
The Algerian superior reek trying to use that jab. Good body shot from Flissy. Covers up well there as well. Good left from Flissy gets through the guard. Rajab Mohammed throwing plenty as well. Flissy just trying to keep him at bay with a jab. Lands a good right inside. And a left hand followed up by the right. Flissy, quick hands. Referee asking Rajab Mohammed to keep his head up. Good shot to the body from Flissy. Mohammed keeping on pressing. He does seem to be walking into a few shots. Flissy came forward and was tagged there by Flissy. Mohammed brave and he's bravely coming forward, but and he lands a good right there. Flissy takes it well. Midway through this opening round. See the Botswana corner urging their man on. That right didn't really connect from Flissy. Mohammed does land with a right. Doesn't quite connect to his light. That's a good right from Mohammed. He's backed Flissy up. Flissy escapes from the ropes. Good footwork there from the Algerian champion. Flissy hands a bit low. Good pressure from Mohammed, but Flissy responds on the counter. Flissy, fine punching, finding his target, accurate shots from the champion. Gets a bit messy there as Flissy keeps Mohammed's head down. 30 seconds to go in round one. Lissy clearly confident, but he's got to be careful that doesn't run into arrogance because Mohammed can punch, but Flissy just that superior hand speed. And it's the end of round one. one. Flissy definitely the, the man on top. But Mohammed landing some shots and no reason for him to be disheartened as yet. He can get through. He's just got to watch those quick counter shots from the Algerian. Just 19 years old, Mohammed. Turns 20 on Wednesday, so this wouldn't be a bad early birthday present. Mohammed Flissi is a world silver medalist in 2013. He'll be in Hamburg at the end of August, trying to go one better. The semi-finalists in all these men's competitions qualify for those World Championships, the IEBA World Championships in Hamburg at the end of August. We're off in round two. Crunching left hook there from Flissy, but Mohammed does land with the right and he gets through the left again. And Flissy would be advised not to hang his chin out because he is getting caught. And the left again from Mohammed. Flissy, good left hook on the counter, on the retreat. Again, keeping those hands dangerously low. Mohammed comes forward again. Crowd definitely behind the underdog. Big cheers as Mohammed landed a couple of those shots early in round two. It's caught him again. Flissy just leaving his chin exposed. Mohammed happy to land on it. Missy trying to use the angles. But 
Messi on the ropes midway through this second round. Messi with a good straight left through the guard. A slightly cleaner work there from the Algerian. Messi lands again. Just trying to stay at range. Trying to entice Mohamed to come on to him and then pick him off as he comes in. That reach advantage for Flissy. Mohamed lands again with Flissy on the retreat and again. And he's caught him again. Flissy then gets away from the ropes, but he's taking too many punches. Good left through the guard from Flissy. Interesting how the judges are scoring this because Mohammed is landing a fair few scoring punches. And Flissy, he might be the more stylish boxer, but he's not putting in the work rate. And Mohammed lands again. The crowd really getting behind the man from Botswana. Landed a right in close. There goes the bell for the end of round two and a bit of urgency in the Algerian corner, I think. Se prépare pour le troisième combat de la journée. Finale. Some, some action from round two. Long. That was a right flush Je on the button there. Kateto Geoffroy de l'Ouganda, ainsi que le boxeur Vadamoutou Jean Jordi de l'Ile Maurice. He's breathing quite heavily. Some final instructions from the Botswana corner. With the 19-year-old be on the verge of a huge upset here on finals day in Brazzaville. Is he still on his chair? As the, rest of the shout of seconds out goes, he's up now. A bit tardy for the start of this final round, but we're on the way. Three minutes to go. Missy lands a couple of good counter punches. It's Mohammed wrestles him back. Good left to the body from Flissy. Mohammed just does land with the lead. Not a great deal of power behind it. Get a bit entangled. Mohamed lands one after the referee says break, but they get on with it. Flissy lands a good left inside. Right to the body from Flissy. Mohamed not getting through the reach in this third round as yet. A minute gone in this third and final round. Flissy just keeping him at bay. Picking him off. Mohamed trying to get in through that reach, but he just can't do it at present. Flissy just picking him off. And that's unfortunate for Mohamed. He's been deducted a point. Persistent holding the offence. That definitely won't help him on the scorecards. Flissy looks to be on his way to retaining his title. His footwork. Useful, and he's making Mohammed miss. A couple of good shots there from Flissy. Just over a minute to go in this final round. He's got on his bike a bit in this round, and it's paying dividends. Just staying out of reach. Mohammed chasing shadows. left counter from Flissy and Mohamed getting a bit desperate his work becoming ragged as Flissy picks him off again Flissy trying to turn on the style Mohamed lands a right and a right again Flissy just getting a bit cocky 
30 seconds to go in this fight. Mohamed needs to produce something special, probably needs a knockdown. Catches his man with the right. Lissy misses with a wild left. Just holds on, 14 seconds to go. Time running out for Mohamed. Inside the final 10 seconds. Not too much landed there, and that's the end of the contest. Mohamed raises his arms, but... I got the first one wrong, but I think Mohamed Flissi has done enough to retain his title. Mohamed was the aggressor for most of that fight. But in that last round, Flissi was finally able to keep him at bay. They're both in the middle of the ring. We'll hear the decision now. Five judges at ringside. And Flissy gets the verdict and retains his title. 27 year old from Algeria, unanimous points decision. I don't think there's too much doubt about that. Mohamed did land some good shots, especially in that second round. But Flissy's jab, those long levers, giving him the advantage. It's another goal for Algeria. Now for the third fight of the day. And this, well, we saw one massive shock in this competition yesterday. Here was the man responsible for it, Jeffrey Kakato, beating the 2015 runner-up and number one seed, Bilal Hamdi of Tunisia. It was a split decision. He knocked Hamdi down in the second round in an absolute thriller of a fight. And the 20-year-old from Uganda just coming through on points. He was deducted a point in the final round, but still had just about enough in hand. Up against him, Jean Jordi Vadamutu from Mauritius. He reached this stage by defeating Gerson Silva Roca of Cape Verde. Unanimous points decision in the semi finals. Kakato won thanks to some really aggressive, relentless attacking against Mohamdi. Here he is. Just 20 years old, Vadamutu, 22 years old from Mauritius. Vadamutu is going to have quite a significant reach advantage and produce some stylish boxing to defeat Silva Rocca yesterday. And I think he'll be using that jab to try and get the better of the youngster from Uganda. Category 56 kilos. Algeria with that victory in the flyweight final to Mohamed Flisi go top of the medals table that was their third goal their two women's goals yesterday but now it's Uganda against Mauritius Jeffrey Kakato in the red for Uganda against Jean Jordi Vadamutu of Mauritius in the blue Bantam weight division, 56 kilograms. And they're a right uppercut from Vadamutu. Kakito keeps covered up well. That high guard, peekaboo style. Vadamutu on the retreat and landing some punches. Vadamutu, orthodox, Kakato, the southpaw stance, leading with the right.
minute gone in round one. Akito trying to pin his man back onto the ropes. Vadamutu escapes. Vadamutu trying to land with the jab. Akito pressing forward. Good right on the retreat there from Vadamutu. So Vadamutu was doing yesterday, good footwork. Trying to make his man miss. Akito, the aggressor, pressing forward. Good left jab there from Vadamutu. It's through with the right as well, the man from Mauritius. Akito stalking him. Having too much success at present, Kakato. Kakato warns to keep his head up. 30 seconds to go in round one. Kakato does get through at last. Vadamutu has to be careful, but Vadamutu lands a great punch on the counter. Turns his man around, referee pauses the action after that turn around. Ten seconds to go in round one. And a good right on the retreat from Vadamutu. That's the, the danger for Kakato. Vadamutu managed to End avoid most of those shots. Couple got through. Ten. That's the danger for Kakato as he presses forward. Vadamutu very adept at landing. Just tagging him as he comes in. Close first round though. Kakato just finding his man a little bit elusive at the moment. Unable to land the shots like he did yesterday against Bilal and Hamdi. Let's see some of that action. Vadamutu not really landing there with those hooks. And just getting out of the way of the Kakato attack. There's the bell for Seven round out. two. Of this bantamweight final at the African Championships. Round. Jeffrey Kakato of Uganda in the red against Jean Jordi Vadimoto of Mauritius in the blue. They're holding, but Vadimoto lands one on the retreat. Kakato tries to unload, but just not getting too close to his man. A couple of body shots from Vadimoto. Kakito just trying to, does get through the left. Vadamutu still managing to pick him off at the start of that exchange. I think Kakato realises that if he's going to land, he's going to have to take some shots as he comes in. Little slip from Kakato. Back on with the action. A minute gone in round two, this bantamweight final. Kakato coming forward. Separated again by the referee. Adamutu trying to use his footwork. Stay out of danger. Kakato got him in close. Adamutu lands on the retreat again. It's those snappy shots. Right through the guard there from Vadamutu, makes his man miss. Good boxing from the man from Mauritius. Akito pours forward once again, but not, a, not 
unable to land any real clean shots. All a bit scrappy from the Ugandan. Badamutu's turn to miss. Kakito does land one, but then Badamutu slips his man again. Kakito gets him in the corner, but Badamutu wraps him up. Closing stages of round two. Again, a difficult one to score. Kato lands a couple, just catches the side of the head and... That was a right that got through from Kakato. Now, can he unload some punches on Vadamutu? Bell goes for the end of round two. Kakato getting a little carried away there. Finally thought he found an opening. But the bell ended those hopes. Vadamutu looking fairly untroubled. Kakato did get right at the end of the round, but I'd struggle to say he was leading this fight after two of the three rounds. Instructions of Vadimutu, 22-year-old. Seeking the biggest win of his career would be the biggest win of Kakato's career too. There was the slip from Kakato. Quite early in that round two. There sounds the bell for the third and final round of this bantamweight final, 56 kilograms. And Jeffrey Kakato in the red on the attack against Jean Jordi Vodamoto. Vadamutu coming back off the ropes. Kakato getting through at the start of round three. The referee will probably have to split them up. A bit untidy bit of wrestling there. Kakato losing his balance as he throws some wild punches. The referee having a word of Vadamutu for holding. Be careful not to be deducted a point. Vadamutu lands a couple of good shots on the inside and he wraps up his man. Kakato complaining. Kakato, again, plenty of aggression, plenty of perspiration, but not landing too many clean punches. It's like a cut. On the left eye of Kakato, referee wants the doctor to have a look at it. It's coming up to the midway point in round three. Doctor having a look. Cut by the left eye. Karamutu with that right hook, which isn't, isn't the most stylish of punches. Kakato catches him on the ropes. And as soon as he does, Vadamutu wraps him up. Kakato landing a couple of blows to the back of the head, warned about that. Vadamutu lands on the retreat. Kakato trying everything. Again, a couple of slaps to the back of the head from Kakato. He's getting frustrated. Vadamutu showing experience, just 22, but showing a bit of nous. In the face of these Kakato attacks. Kakato in close. And again, the doctor's going to have to another look, another look at that cut. It's streaming blood. Doesn't look like it's going into the eye, so not too dangerous. It's just... Can't have blood flowing around in the ring. Should be clear to continue. Not long to go in this fight now. 
under a minute to go. Mercato trying to land the sharp, short shots. Did get through the couple. Badabuti's got to be careful here because he has been almost exclusively on the defensive in this third round. And if it was a close contest, which I think it is, the Ugandan superior work rate could give him the verdict here. Ten seconds to go in round three. Kikato lands a right. Bit of a stretch, but it did land. Badamutu tying his opponent up. That's the end of the fight. Not too many histrionics from either fighter, I think. I think this one's tight. It'll be very interested to see what the five judges at ringside say. If I was scoring it, I'd probably just give it to Vadamutu. I'd say he probably won the first two rounds, Kakato the third. But I think, don't think there was much doubt Kakato took the third. But those first two rounds very much open to interpretation. The match and from that final round, cuffing right there from Vadamutu with the inside of the glove. The right there from Kakato did land. Vadamutu quick to hold on. There's Kakato, a couple of legal blows. Here's the decision, Vadamutu gets it. Winner on point, don't have a score to tell us whether it was a unanimous decision or just a majority decision, but it's gold for Mauritius. jean Jordi Vadamutu beats Jeffrey Kakato to take the bantamweight title here at the African Championships. Moving on quickly to the fourth final of the afternoon. We've already seen one Algerian retain his title here. We could be about to see another in the red, the top seed. As I say, defending champion, the All-Africa Games champion, Reda Ben Baziz. There he is, coming out to face the third seed, Nick Okop of Kenya. Ben Baziz didn't have the easiest passage in the semi-finals. Beat John John Collin of Mauritius, majority points decision. Nick Okot, well, he had a walkover through to this final. The 2015 bantamweight champion, Mohamed Hamout, was supposed to be his opponent, but Hamout could not fight. So Okot went through by way of walkover. Not a great sign for Okot there, already some grease being applied. He is 34 years old, so that face has probably seen some marking over the years. Hence the grease on there to protect it, but there is Reda Ben Baziz, the strong favourite for this lightweight final, 60 kilograms. There's Nick Okoth from Kenya, 2014 Commonwealth Games quarter finalist, 34 years old, as I say, lots of experience. Few few years on Ben Baziz, who's just 23. But the defending champion, our referee Dermot McDermott from Ireland. Both men back to their corners and waiting the first bell of this lightweight final. You can see Ben Baziz, Southpaw, leading with the right, pouring right pouring at his opponent, a cot, the more orthodox fighter. Ben Baziz snaking out that jab.
Good right on the counter from Akot. The crowd definitely cheering on the man from Kenya. Ben Baziz, as I say, the strong favourite, defending champion, 2015 All-Africa Games champion, which was held in Brazzaville. Good right to the body there from Akot. Mbaziz trying to use his feet to keep the Kenyan at range. Midway through the first round. Not too much leather being thrown here. Cot wary of that long right jab. Trying to pick his moment to come in. Trying to land on the counter there, but... Neither man really landing in this opening round. You can see Ben Baziz almost trying to work out his combinations. Trying to find the opening, but... Pot not falling for it. And as a result, it's a bit of a stalemate in this first round. Thirty seconds to go in round one, and a cot lands on the counter. But then Ben Baziz responds. Those shots from Ben Baziz just falling short. And now it's a cot's turn to try and move forward, try and press as we go into the final ten seconds of round one. But a cop, you can see, is very wary of that right hand. Gets in there, but messy. And that's the end of round one. Where, to be honest, not too much happened. Bit of a standoff at times. A cot wary of that right jab of Ben Baziz. He's taking instruction from his corner. Pretty sure this was like Ben Baziz yesterday. Yeah, first round he did struggle a bit and then gradually worked his way into the fight. You know, often happens. First round where fighters just try and feel each other out. Some of the action from that opening round. Where a cop threw a couple of punches, which landed not as cleanly as he would have, he would have liked. Ben Baziz, quite an elusive fighter. There goes the bell for round two of this lightweight final. Defending champion Reda Ben Baziz from Algeria in the red. Up against Nick Akot of Kenya in the blue. And Kakot lands. Good shot there on the inside. Crowd cheering as Akot lands again, but Ben Baziz also landed. Veteran now, a cop, 34 years old. Referee warning a cop just to keep his head up. Not for the first time. It's another cagey one. Pot is the man on the front foot, but reluctant to throw, and then Ben Baziz lands with the left. Left over the top from Ben Baziz, scoring. The left finally at the end of that exchange from Ben Baziz, the telling punch of that exchange. 
halfway through it through the second round second round of three and again an exchange which both fighters land but Ben Baziz arguably just the stronger shot and then Cox off balance as he tries to land the big shot and Ben Baziz when he works at range he looks a good fighter it's up to a cox to try and get beyond that reach. And a cop does have some joy there. Gets in, lands with the right. Doesn't seem to have troubled Ben Baziz too much. You just feel a cop's got to increase the work rate. He's going to get the decision here. Ben Baziz looks reasonably comfortable. Left counter over the top there from Ben Baziz. Got left lead, gets through the guard. Ten seconds to go in round two. Neither man landing in those final 10 seconds of the second round. Crowd are happy. Stitches there over that eye with Ben Baziz. Been patched up in this tournament. More grease there. The boxer Mohamed Eslam Ahmed Ali from the Egypt. The action there from round two. Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. Ben Baziz complaining that the cop hit him on the back of the head. Didn't see too much wrong with that, to be honest. The cop was slightly off balance. One round left in this the lightweight Sonny final at the African Championships. been a cagey affair between the defending champion Red Ben Baziz of Algeria in the red and Nick Akot of Kenya in the blue Ben Baziz goes with the hook Akot falls short with his punches does land with a body shot there does land with another left as Ben Baziz replies in kind. Good right there from Akot, does get through. That gives the crowd something to cheer. Ben Baziz lands there, puts his arms up to uh, almost acknowledge it and then a bit untidy there, Akot. Lifting. I think that's a bit harsh. He lifted Ben Baziz there on his shoulder because Ben Baziz had overbalanced. And the referee, Dermot McDermott, has deducted him a point, and that could be crucial. Ben Baziz pushing his man back. And his landing is getting through now. Is Ben Baziz throwing combinations? It's almost as if that deduction of the point has encouraged Ben Baziz to, to go forward. You'd thought it'd be the other way round. You'd think he'd adopt those tactics if he needed to force a stoppage or do something special, but Ben Baziz appears to have been given the cue to, to unload and try and take his man out. Akot looks a tough customer, though. And Akot landing. And Ben Baziz, I'm not sure why he's getting involved in a scrap because that's giving a cop some confidence and a cop really going for it the crowd behind him the cop's got nothing to lose he's been deducted a point and he's got through again Ben Baziz did land but a cop really got a bit between his teeth a cop pursuing his man around the ring now he's got him at the ropes landed a body shot but wasn't able to follow up. Ben Baziz too quick. 
But now a clock lands again to the head. Again, Ben Bazis puts his arms out to say, I'm not hurt. Usually when that happens, it means he is. Referee telling Ben Bazis to lift his head up. Fakoda just managed to do this a bit earlier. You feel he might have had a chance. Ten seconds to go in round three. Can he land another big shot before the end of the round? Ben Bazis blowing hard. But he looks like he's held on. And off. Crowd very excited. Got to be right behind Nick the Cot, especially in that last round. It was a strange final round. Ben Bazis went on the attack after a cot had been deducted a point. And that just seemed to galvanise a cot. Threw a bit of caution to the wind. It'll be interesting to see how the judges have scored that, but I think that point deduction could prove decisive. Decisive. Here is the verdict. Mesdames et messieurs, le vainqueur. And the winner is Nick Akot. It's an upset. It's a split decision. Nick Akot, despite having that point deducted in the final round has been given the verdict. He has beaten the defending champion, and it's gold for Kenya for Nick Akot, the 34-year-old, a veteran. And he has upset Reda Ben Baziz of Algeria. A split decision. And another different nation gets gold here in Brazzaville. The crowd delighted with that decision. I'd love to see the round break down, how the judges scored it. The Cox would have won that final round, but for the point deduction, I'm sure. It'll be interesting to see how they scored those first two rounds. But there's your champion, the lightweight champion at 60 kilograms, Nick Lecot. Algeria denied a fourth gold medal at these Belgique. African Boxing Championships. Moving on now to light welterweight. Now this should be one of the fights of the night. 64 kilograms. Eslam Mohamed there, your top seed from Egypt. Up against Namibia's Jonas, Junias, Jonas. Mohamed, 27 years old, fought at London 2012 where he was knocked out in the first round of the 2015 quarter-finalist in these African Championships. There's Jonas, Junias Jonas, his country's flag bearer in Rio. But uh, he spent eight months in the Namibian embassy in Rio. He was accused of sexual assault after the opening ceremony. He fought in Rio, was knocked out in the first round. But then um, he wasn't allowed to leave the country until April. And he stayed in the Namibia Embassy. He's been back for two months. He still might have to return to Brazil to face charges. He's the 2014 Commonwealth Bronze medalist. And he was very, very impressive in his semi-final, beating the home favourite Malonga Dival. Unanimous points decision. Mohamed beat Malumbo Mbaya of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Another unanimous points decision. And it's the stylist Jonas up against the Egyptian strongman Eslam Mohamed. This should be an interesting fight. Real contrast of styles. Tough, no nonsense Mohamed up against the silky skills of Jonas. I thought out of the fighters we saw yesterday, Jonas possibly the best, best boxer on display yesterday. Showed really good skills to beat Deval of Congo. And Jonas on the attack, getting through with the jab. Mohamed responds. There's a good right from Mohamed. Opening minute for the first round. Mohamed steps away from Jonas, who circles the ring, leading with the left jab. 
looking for the opening Jonas lands with the right Mohammed on the retreat quick hands Jonas what is man against the ropes Mohammed sways away from that attempted right from Jonas Jonas going in pursuit of his man. Mohammed just pushes him off. Wild left from Mohammed misses and Jonas tags him. See Jonas' footwork there. Mohammed missed with the overhand right and then took a jab from Jonas. Mohamed just struggling to, to get through in this opening round. Jonas, big reach advantage. And again, Jonas landing the punches and Mohamed unable to respond. Mohamed on the back foot. Alvin Finch, referee, telling both fighters to, to split and then re-engage. Thirty seconds to go. This opening round. Jonas lands with a right over the top. Mohammed falls short with a couple of punches. Jonas, just those jabs, punching from range, scoring punches. Might not be particularly hurtful, but he is landing, and Mohammed isn't. It's the final bell bell at the end of round one of this light welterweight final there's Eslam Mohammed looks to have a bit of a job on his hands because he's facing a man who's hard to hit and Junius Jonas he looks extremely relaxed Jonas missing there, Mohammed, not the easiest man to hit himself, but Jonas definitely landed the majority of the punches in that opening round. And the top seed from Egypt probably needs to change tack. He's going to get a result here. to the middle round. round. Might, might see some more aggression from Mohammed in this round because he wasn't having too much success in the opening round. Quick hands of Jonas. Mohammed punching away. Alvin Finch telling Jonas to quit with the holding and hitting. Yelling out, don't hold. Last thing you want to see is a points deduction. Right. Bit of a clash of heads there. Mohammed leading with the head. No damage done. No damage done, unfortunately. Approaching the midway of this point of this second round. Jonas lands again. Mohammed trying to to get something going on the inside, but Jonas just a bit too quick. Nice combination from Jonas. Just the cleaner, smarter, quicker work from Jonas. Caught him again with a one-two. He's warming to the task, Jonas. Mohammed doesn't seem to have too much response at the moment. Lovely sharp left from Jonas. And Mohammed in a bit of trouble here. You can tell from his corner. 
urging him on, but Jonas, too many skills. Mohamed's covering up tight. Mohamed just falling short again. Jonas stepping back, swaying out of the way. The Egyptians punches and when he attacks, just seems to get through with that left. 30 seconds to go in round two. It's been a good round. Junius Jonas from Namibia. Seconds to go in the round. Mohammed does get through the left, but that's the end of the second round. And it looks like Eslam Mohammed has a mountain to climb if he's going to win this fight. There's Junius Jonas. The first round was very tight, but Jonas, I thought, comfortably took round two. And Jonas, as well as fighting well on the back foot, coming forward, landing the jabs. It was a good punch from Mohammed there. One of the few punches he landed of any consequence in that second round. There was the clash of heads. Second round. Can sense that Mohammed's trying to rough his man up and drag him into a bit of a brawl, but Jonas having none of it. And that's the bell for the start of the third and final round of this light welterweight final. Eslam Mohammed of Egypt in the red, Junius Jonas of Namibia in the blue. Mohammed the top seed, but Jonas on top, and again just having the. through the right I think this is more like the sort of fight Mohammed wants but Jonas seems up to the task catching Mohammed as he comes in again looks a complete fighter this Jonas the referee telling both fighters to watch the hits on the back of the head now is that a cut on Mohammed's face. Can't see that rope seems to be in the way, but yeah, I guess it looks like from what the doctor's doing is a cut just above his left eye. And they get back on with it. Just over two minutes to go in this third and final round. Jonas landing with the right. Mohammed, a bit of kidology there. A lovely sweeping uppercut there from Jonas, hitting the mark. Again, Jonas just quicker to the punch. And Mohammed doesn't seem to have too many ideas here. And Mohammed pushing forward, but Jonas picking him off. Mohammed did land a nice short right there. But Jonas still appears to be on top. And a good right from Jonas to almost turns his man around. It's a bit messy. Referee telling Mohammed to keep his head up. Jonas sways out of the way of that attempted big left from Mohammed. Jonas looking pretty unruffled. I hear Finch, referee Alvin Finch saying, don't hold, don't hold again. Blood by the ear of Eslam Mohammed, and I think the trainer might have to have a look at that. No, referee letting them continue inside the, the final 30 seconds. This intriguing light welterweight contest. 
Julius Jonas then backing his man up into the ropes. Inside the final 10 seconds now. Jonas feels just got to stay upright if he's going to win this one. Tries to land a big right. Bit of an untidy end to the fight. Both men raise their gloves. But Junius Jonas looks pretty pleased with himself and as well he should be. I think he's done more than enough to win this final. It's up to the judges now. Five judges at ringside. This fifth final of the afternoon. All four previous finals have gone to points. Here's another one, and here comes the verdict. And it's victory for Junius Jonas. Wins on points. The flag bearer at the Rio 2016 Olympics for Namibia takes the African Championship. He's the champion at light welterweight. A well-deserved victory. Eslam Mohamed leaves the ring. The top seed just unable to cope with the skills of Junius Jonas, who to my eyes has been one of the two or three best boxers in this competition. Hard to hit, accurate punches, great footwork. And he is the light welterweight champion. Moving on to the sixth fight of the afternoon. It's the men's welterweight final, 69 kilograms. Mauritius have already won one gold in the form of Jean Jordi Vadamutu in the bantamweight division. Can Mervyn Clare make it two? He's up against Muzamir Kekande of Uganda. There's Mervyn Clare. Caused a huge shock yesterday. A unanimous points decision over the 2015 runner-up, Walid Said Mohamed of Egypt. Twenty-three years old, Mervyn Clare. And there's his opponent, King Kong, as he's known, Muzamir Kakande from Uganda, 22 years old. Edged through in his semi-final, beat Nkumbe Silungwe of Zambia, a split decision. Kakande, 22 years old, he missed the Africa Olympic Charles. He had qualified for them. It was an administrative mix-up. And by the time he'd sorted it out and got his flight to Yaoundé in Cameroon, where the Olympic trials were taking place, he'd missed the way in. And that was his chance of reaching Rio 2016 gone. Last year, this last two years ago, I should say, this competition was won by Mohamed Rabi from Morocco, who then went on to take Africa's first world championship title since 1978. Rabi went on to take bronze at Rio 2016, and he turned professional earlier this year so obviously he wasn't here to defend his title and the new champion will be one of these two men your referee Ion Mihai from Romania Mervyn Clare of Mauritius in the red up against Muzamir Kikande of Uganda in the blue Clare very impressive yesterday in knocking out the top seed Walid Said Mohamed gets through as well, he's got the reach advantage. And there's a knockdown. Well, I have to see, I didn't really see that punch very clearly. But it's a knockdown in the opening round. And Claire already on top in this fight. There were some punches landed, but I thought it was a bit of a slip myself, we'll have to see the interval between rounds, but Claire lands and it's a knockdown, so that almost certainly makes this a 10-8 round, providing nothing untoward happens for the rest of it, but Claire with that reach advantage, Southpaw leading with the right. Already in charge of this one.
Leclerc landing on the retreat. Kakende coming forward. Good left from Claire. Oh, left over the top from Kakande. And a standing count for Claire. Well. Not on 10-8 round now. Both fighters having some joy in this opening round. And Claire on the retreat. And Kakande lands again with a big left. I have to say I wasn't sure that merited a standing eight count given by the referee, but that's where we are. And Kakande fancies this job now. Having hit the deck, he's got up. And now he's right back in this fight. Charging forward, Claire, couple of smart but punches on the retreat. 45 seconds to go in round one. Good right from Claire gets through. Kakande just leaving himself a bit open. Kakande caught again. The young Ugandan trying to corner Claire, and he gets through with the right over the top, but Claire responds. Good fight, this. 20 seconds to go in round one. Kakande right over the top, hits the mark. He's got Claire in the corner, and Claire taking a few shots. Claire holds on. 10 seconds to go in round one. Kakande swinging wildly there. And that's the end, end of, of round, round one. one. Well, so much incident in that opening round. We had a knockdown, Kakande on the deck, and then Claire took a standing count. The crowd right into this one. Kakande, who looked in deep trouble, then landed with some really good shots of his own. A fight which really could go either way from here. The Mauritian corner don't look too concerned. Second out. Let's see what happens in round two. Mervyn Clare of Mauritius in the red up against Muzamir Kakande of Uganda in the blue. King Kong from Uganda. Right gets through from Kakande. Claire trying to use that right jab, use his feet to get away as Kakande comes forward. Referee judged that a slip, and then Kakande landed a big shot. After I think the referee had said break, but referee allows them to continue. Kakande, he's up for this one. Just getting caught as he comes in, but then does land a right with Claire on the retreat. Trying to rough up his man, Kakande. Good left from Claire. Claire landing again as Kakande moves in. Holding from Claire. Crowd not happy with that. Kakande tries to land the uppercut even with one hand tied up. Referee tells Kakande just to keep his head up. He's kind of boring in as he tries to land those punches. Body shot from Kakande. Claire just trying to use his feet to stay away. Wild left misses from Kakande and Claire just pushes him back. A 
it untidy again. Claire just using a few spoiling tactics. Kikande is a bit wild, he's a bit ragged from Kikande, but he has had some success. Claire misses with the uppercut, then lands two shots straight through the guard, left and the right. Oh, good right from Kikande, a couple of punches. Thought Claire was wobbled a bit by that, and another straight right gets through from Kikande. Again, this one's a really difficult one to score. Kakande, the aggressor, charging forward, head down. Claire picking his man off on occasion when he comes in. No doubt who the crowd wants to win this one. Claire, a bit, bit of holding on at times, which could attract the referee's ire in this third round, and you certainly wouldn't want to have a point deducted. Strange there where Claire grabbed the rope to pull himself back up. Just after he did so, Kakande did land. The third and final round of this welterweight final, 69 kilogram weight division. There's Mervyn Clare in the red from Mauritius up against Mizumir Kakande of Uganda. And Kakande gets through again. He's really going for it. He knows he has to. And Clare covering up, but he is taking a few. Kakande, it's wild, it's ragged, but it is working at times. And he just needs to keep going like this. And try to avoid being caught. And he's got through the right again. Claire forced to cover up on the ropes. Kakande gets through again. Good left. He's got Claire going backwards. Claire on the retreat. And he's been hurt. Body shot from Kakande. It's pouring on the pressure. Not too much coming back from Claire. Some concern in the Mauritian corner. Claire lands with the jab, that's what he really needs to do, just keep it at range, but Kikande will not be deterred. Continues to go after his man. Gets through the guard with a, with a right. Claire gets off the rope smartly. Claire starting to look a little tired. The footwork not as slick as it was earlier, and Kikande continuing to throw punches and Claire not keeping his guard up as he should. Referee having a quick word with Kakande, but that won't delay him for long. The Ugandan again back up and at him. Claire, a slip. 40 seconds to go in round three, but I think Claire's struggling here and Kakande moving in for the kill perhaps. Claire trying to get away, but Kakande charging after him. 20 seconds to go in this final round. That's so much action in this one. Kakande doing all the pressing forward. Trying to land a few more telling shots before the end of this fight. We're inside the final 10 seconds, Claire lands, both men land. They slap gloves at the end of the fight. Crowd loved that one. Be interested to see how the judges decide. Kakande clearly 
the greater work rate, Claire, the better boxing skills, but on the back foot for most of that final round. And I think Kakande might, just might have got this decision, but it's tight. What a change from early on. Here comes the decision. Kakande hitting the deck in the first round, but here comes the decision. And it goes to Kakande. A split decision, three to two. The judges give it to the 22-year-old from Uganda who is on the deck in the first 30 seconds. Interesting celebration. There's the King Kong celebration. And he is now the African champion. Muzamir Kakande. Uganda's first gold of this competition. Mervyn Clare has to settle for silver. But Kakande, that last round, proving decisive. He was down inside the first 30 seconds and he comes back to take the gold medal for Uganda. And another new country gets gold. In this competition, in this 2017 African Championships. It wasn't the most stylish of displays, but it was effective. And gold for Uganda. I'm just trying to find out what's happened here. We were due to have a middleweight contest between Hossam Abdin and Judon Wilfried Sein Senge, which was I was looking forward to. It was going to be the fight of the of the night, but uh, we've gone straight to the light heavyweight. And it's Yomba Ulrich of Cameroon up against Chuaib Buadi of Morocco. There's Yomba Ulrich. As soon as I hear anything about the middleweight contest, I'll tell you, I was just, from what I could hear on the tannoy, it sounded like, obviously I guess there's been a walkover, but there was mention of a Cameroon boxer and that would be dear Don Wilfried saying Senge. So, can't be certain, but perhaps he has been awarded the gold by walkover against Hassan Abdin. But we're on to the light heavyweight final. Yomba Ulrich in the red up against Chuaib Uadi of Morocco in the blue. Yomba Ulrich, comfortable winner over Mbachi Kayonga of Zambia yesterday in the semi finals. Valerie Pastorhoff from Moldova, your referee here. Chuaib Uadi from Morocco on your right there in the blue. The beneficiary of what I thought was a controversial victory, controversial points decision. One split decision, three to two against Ngalabaya Rodriguez, the home favourite from Congo. He's into the final now, up against Yombo Ulrich of Cameroon. Cameroon with two golds already in this championships. Women's golds from yesterday. Can they make it three with Yombo Ulrich? Which they could already be on three if Say and Senge has been has taken middleweight gold. As soon as I hear anything, I'll let you know on that. But Yombo Ulrich looked assured yesterday. He started well against Huadi. Some stiff rights in there from Yombo Ulrich. Rick trying to get away from his man there and increase the space between them so he can get some punches away. He seems to be first hitting the mark. Yombo Ulrich using that left jab. Nuwadi, who's tough, resilient as he showed yesterday, just falling short there with a couple of attempted punches and Ulrich picking him off. Wadi going to try to land with the right over the top. Ulrich wise to it for the most part so far, midway through the first round. Wadi throwing hard shots but not connecting. 
and you will find right there through the guard. That Shukuwadi, and he's shaking him again with a right, and then a left on the retreat from Yombo Ulrich. Good display so far for the man from Cameroon. Yombo Ulrich landing first with a jab, then a right over the top, and Awadi taking too many punches at present. Ulrich misses with a swinging right. Awadi lands with a left, short left, gum shield's gone out. Ulrich's gum shield came out there and just had to be replaced. 20 seconds left in round one. Grabs a quick word with his trainer. Ulrich gets Awadi as the Moroccan comes in and again. Good work from Ulrich. Just quicker to the punch. Awadi. It's a bit ragged, and Ulrich picking him off. And there's a cut. That cut actually was uh, opened up yesterday. Fine punch again from Ulrich. Ten seconds to go in round one, and he's catching him at will here. And Uwadi's in trouble. And there's a standing eight count. That cut that Uwadi had yesterday has opened up already in this first round. Standing eight count for Uwadi. Ulrich landing some heavy blows. And that's it. That's a stoppage, I think. That's it, it's all over. It's been stopped in the first. Yombo Ulrich has won the light heavyweight title. It's another goal for Cameroon. Some heavy blows at the end of that first round. And the referee judging that Chuaye Boadi was in no state to continue. Awadi sending himself back and saying, see that cut already open. Big right from Ulrich landing. Waiting for the formality of the decision. Awadi drops back into the middle of the ring. Yombo Ulrich is the African light heavyweight champion. A first round stoppage of Chuayi Bawadi from Morocco. It's another goal for Cameroon. And a devastating finish from Yombo Ulrich. Wouldn't mind seeing that again. But he landed some heavy shots and Uwadi took a standing eight count and at the end of that standing eight count the referee decided they had seen enough and there's your gold medalist in the light heavyweight division and you can hear the noise increasing in the arena and that's because it's time for the home favorite Laurie Yannick Pembo Ebeka of Congo up against the defending champion Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda of Morocco. Hold on to your hats for this one. The gymnast Nicole Oba in Brazzaville, Congo. Congo, and I wouldn't be surprised if the roof came up. As into the arena comes the home favourite, Laurie Yannick Pendoebeka. Can he win gold for the host nation? He's their only finalist at these African Boxing Championships. He defeated Tumba Silva of Angola in the semi finals yesterday before that in the quarter finals. He beat the top seed, Joseph Kennedy St. Pierre of Mauritius. A unanimous points decision. Here's the defending champion, though, Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda from Morocco, 25 years old. 
a majority points decision yesterday in the semi-finals against MC Soy Christian of Cameroon. There's Ebu Hamda into the ring. Who had a hard fight in his semi-final. Despite a significant reach advantage, Abu Hamda made hard work there against Christian, got drawn into a bit of a slugfest as Pembu Abeka raises his arms to the crowd. All four corners of the ring. And this one will be noisy. The, the arena packed now. It was empty at the start of the afternoon. I say not empty, but it was far from full at the start of the afternoon. But it's filled up in anticipation of this fight. Second out. The heavyweight final, 91 kilograms, between Laurie Yanni, Pembo Abeka of Congo in the red, against Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda of Morocco in the blue. The fighters touch gloves before this first of three three-minute rounds to decide who will be the African heavyweight champion. First round. We're underway. Pembo Abeka, that peekaboo style, keeping the hands high. And every punch he, landed, he lands will be greeted with cheers by this home crowd. He reached a bit there and Abu Hamda picked him off with the jab. Big rangy fighter, Abu Hamda. Pembo Abeka. Very aggressive yesterday and he'll need to do more of the same, but Abu Hamda. That jab, getting through the guard. Pembo Abeka catches his man on the retreat and he's caught him. He's got to be careful with it. He doesn't get caught on his way in, Pembo Abeka. And Abu Hamda starts to unload. Promising start to this fight. Both men happy to attack. A minute gone in this first round. Plenty of chanting in the crowd. Abu Hamda trying to unleash those punches from range. Pembo Abeka charges in again. Sense. Abu Hamda just trying to tee up his man. Tee him up with the jab and then bring over the right. Lands with the uppercut, Abu Hamda, and then Pembo Abeka misses with a wild swing with the left. Midway through this first round. And he catches Pembo Abeka on the way in again. Good boxing from Abu Hamda. Pembo Abeka lands on the counter there. Does send Abu Hamda back. I noticed yesterday Abu Hamda underneath that left eye, a bit of marking, and you can see it again here. The crowd imploring Abu Pembu Abeka to come forward. There's that jab from Abu Hamda. So Pembu Abeka can't be too reckless as he comes forward, or he will get picked off by that jab. is he does bully him back into the corner Pembo Abeka but Abu Hamda steps away danger over for now there he is he's just driving him back Pembo Abeka and that gets the crowd going right over the top from Pembo Abeka lands and he's caught him again 10 seconds to go in round one plenty of noise from the crowd as Pembo Abeka has some success with the right over the top there's the bell for the end of round one. Fin du premier round. You can tell what the crowd think of it. Some of that action from the first round. I think we just missed that big right that landed on the replay.
and Rebecca missing there with the attempt at a big left and again Thirty one years old, Laurie Yadik, Pembo Abeka. Second out. And now getting ready for round two. Swanyado. Second out. There goes the bell for round two. Deuxième round. Laurie Pembo Abeka in the red. Congo. It's Abdel Jalid. Abu Hamda. Abdu Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda from Morocco in the blue. Abu Hamda using that jab. Abu Hamda just caught there, I thought. And Pendle Rebecca again just trying to avoid the jab coming in. That was a bit of a cuff, that one. But it did land and he's landing again. And Abu Hamda has to retreat. Pembo Rebecca just charging forward here. Trying to keep those hands high to block the jab as he comes in. And he's having some success here, having some joy. A minute gone in the second round of three. Abu Hamda with straight right. The crowd cheering on their man. Pembo Rebecca lands, but he's caught on the counter. Can't afford to leave himself exposed or Abu Hamda. The punch down there. Referee quick to spot that one and quick to call him up on it. Pembo Rebecca drives forward once again. Abu Hamda right to the body. Pushes his man off. Oh, that was a wonderful right through the guard from Abu Hamda. And Pembo Rebecca felt that. But he carries on. Moving forward as the home favourite. Gets in there with the left. Doesn't really connect. Abu Hamda lands with the jab again. And with the right on the retreat. Pembo Rebecca unloading, but not getting through. And it's Abu Hamda who's producing the quality work in this second round. Good body shot from Abu Hamda. Pendle Rebecca trying to bully his man, rough him up. Abu, Ham Abu Hamda just a bit too clever. Pendle Rebecca coming forward once again. And he got a good left uppercut from Pendle Rebecca. Gum shield's gone out. Pembo Rebecca's gum shield just going back in. Plenty of advice from the side, from the crowd, it seems. All got their opinion on what their man should be doing. They're looking a bit more anxious now as Abu Hamda asserts the authority, but a good left there from Pembo Rebecca, which had the crowd going. Ten seconds to go in round two. Gets through again, Pembo Rebecca, but Abu Hamda leans back onto the ropes and escapes. A rousing finish for that second and round from Pembo Rebecca, but I think Abu Hamda ben shaded ben it. The crowd is animated. Some of the crowd's animated, some looking Ce quite concerned. Pour le deuxième combat. And Pembo Rebecca has one round left. Abu Hamda one round away from retaining his title. The 25-year-old from Morocco. There's the home favourite. Frantic instructions there for Pembo Rebecca before this final round. Some anxious faces in the crowd. They'll be urging their man on in these final three minutes. And Abu Hamda caught with the left there, but he had landed some pretty good shots of his own before then. Into the final round. Laurie Yannick, Pembo Rebecca 
on the attack and getting through against the defending champion Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda. But back comes Abu Hamda. The Moroccan getting through with some punches of his own. Body shot there. Good punch from Pembo Rebecca, but Abu Hamda has the final say in that exchange. He's leaning on his man, trying to wear him down, Abu Hamda. Misses with the uppercut, the big Moroccan. Pembo Rebecca, a bit ragged, trying everything in front of his home crowd. Pembo Rebecca lands with the uppercut, but not cleanly. Misses with the uppercut. Good defence from Abu Hamda. Good body shot from Abu Hamda. And Pembo Rebecca takes in a big suck of breath after that. Big gulp of air. That crunching body shot from Abu Hamda. Crowd chanting, but Pembo Rebecca not really, not really producing in this final round. And Abu Hamda gets through. More body shots from Abu Hamda. Pembo Rebecca starting to look a bit weary. Referee just has to prise them apart as Pembo Rebecca ducks low. Good jab from Abu Hamda on the retreat. A minute to go in the final round. Good right from Pembo Rebecca, but he takes one himself. This is what Pembo Rebecca needs to do. He needs to really start throwing. And he's getting through. The gum shield's gone out again, which is a shame because Pembo Rebecca was just getting up a bit of a head of steam. 48 seconds to go in the final round. Back on with the fight. Abu Hamda lands all, crunching, jab through the guard there. Landed three punches in succession, and again. Pembo Abeka charging forward. Now or never, 30 seconds to go, and he's caught his man, and Abu Hamda sent backwards. Abu Hamda landed a good shot of himself there. Pembo Abeka's really got to step it up. 20 seconds to go. Abu Hamda on the retreat. Pembo Rebecca gets through again. Ten seconds to go. Untidy clinch. Abu Hamda trying to land for close quarters, and that's the end of the fight. Abu Hamda thinks he's retained his title. I wouldn't disagree. The crowd cheering, hoping their man gets the decision. Pembo Rebecca salutes the crowd, but has he done enough to get the decision? It will go down to the five judges at ringside to decide who will be the heavyweight champion. Here comes the decision. And it goes to Abu Hamda. Disappointment for the home crowd. A unanimous points decision. Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda of Morocco retains his heavyweight title. A brave effort from Laurie Yannick Pembo Rebecca from Congo but not quite enough on the day. Back on with the action here in the Gymnase Nicol Oba in Brazzaville, Congo. Now it's time for the final men's final of these African championships. The super heavyweight final between Foko Foso Arsene of Cameroon and David Aiti of Uganda. Some news to bring you the Congolese Federation appealed the result of that heavyweight final between Laurie Yannick, Pembo Rebecca and Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda. Abu Hamda was given a unanimous points decision, but after a review, after an appeal from the Congolese Federation and a subsequent review, the decision has been reversed and Pembo Rebecca has been handed the championship. He is the African heavyweight champion of 2017. Now it's back on with the action. 
We're waiting for the two fighters, for the super heavyweight final. Foku Foso Arsene of Cameroon and David Aiti. Arsene from Cameroon in the red. Here he comes now. This is the plus 91 kilograms weight division. 33 years old, turns 34 on Tuesday. So looking for an early birthday present. He won in just two rounds yesterday. Beat Uozri Rezek Mustafa Hafez of Egypt. And uh, a slightly confusing finish. It was finished by abandonment in the second round. And, and what it transpired was that the Egyptians threw in the towel. Didn't throw in the towel in the normal traditional manner. They sort of draped it over, over the ropes. But uh, that was the end of the contest. And that sent Arsene through to today's final, where he will face David Aiti of Uganda, who was a very impressive winner against Carlos and Bui Masia of Angola. Unanimous points decision. There's Arsene bowing to the crowd. In his gymnase, Nicole Oba in Brazzaville. This is the last men's final for these championships. Arsene of Cameroon in the red against Aiti of Uganda in the blue. Aiti, 25 years old. Uganda already have one gold medal at these championships. Courtesy of Muzamir Kakande in the welterweight division. Cameroon have at least three. Yombo Ulrich winning the light heavyweight earlier. Waiting for confirmation on the middleweight, which uh, the middleweight final did not take place between Hossam Abdin of Egypt and Diodon Wilfrid Say and Sengi of Cameroon. But here's the opening bell of the last men's final at these African Championships in the red. Foku Foso Arsene of Cameroon against David Aiti of Uganda in the blue. Already both men landing punches. Arsene on the attack. Keen to throw. Plenty of hooks there and he already looks to have Aiti in trouble. And Aiti goes down. And it is a knockdown. Just 30 seconds into the fight. They weren't particularly clean shots, but they clearly had some impact. And Aiti has already got a cut over his right eye as well, which the doctor's going to have a look at. Goodness me, drama at the start of this first round. Aiti having that cut looked at. It was a frenetic start from the man from Cameroon. And he's well on top here. He's got Aiti in trouble again on the ropes. Aiti trying to work his way out of trouble, but he just can't escape. He's got to use those feet. He's rooted to the spot. And another left lands from Arsene. Aiti looks so assured in his semi-final, but looks anything but here. Arsene just throwing punches to head and body. Aiti trying to regroup, lands on the counter, but he looks in deep trouble. Midway point of the first round. There's nothing particularly stylish about Arsene's work, but he is getting through and he's landed. Aiti lands his first decent shot of the contest. Starting to weather the storm. Looked like he was caught cold at the start as Arsene came wading in there. Aiti needs to just settle down, use that jab. Covering up now. Lands with a right over the top. Uppercut from Aiti does a bit of damage. A minute left in round one. In which Arsene scored a knockdown. But Aiti has shown a bit in return. Clearly just doesn't want to be drawn into a toe-to-toe -to -toe brawl. Good punches from Aiti, and now he's got Arsene in trouble. Big men, obviously, this is the super heavyweight division, so those punches are going to carry some weight. Oh, he's caught him out cold. Arsene goes back to the neutral corner. It's all over. Goodness me. A crunching knockout blow from Foku Foso Arsene. 
And David Aiti's on the ground. I do hope he's all right. He looks in some trouble. He hasn't got up. The doctor looking at him. And he's been knocked spark out by Arsene. There's your champion, Boku Fosso Arsene from Cameroon. Another gold for Cameroon. Scored a knockdown within the first 30 seconds of the contest. And then he's knocked down his opponent again. But I'm afraid to say that David Aiti appears to be in some trouble after being floored. Oh, he's, he's coaching up. No need to rush him, obviously. But he's now he's sitting up. I think he's on his feet now. He is. He's very unsteady on his feet, obviously, but he's being helped back to his corner. A right had Aiti wobbling, and then another right, and that was game over. The doctor looking at him, also looking at that cut over his right eye that he suffered within those opening 30 seconds. When you get hit by a super heavyweight, it's bound to hurt. There is your champion, Foku Fosso Arsene of Cameroon, 33, turns 34 on Tuesday. There's a birthday present for him, the African Championship. After a first round knockout against David Aiti of Uganda. Joy in his corner, Arsene looking a bit subdued, understandably. No fighter likes to see their opponent remain on the deck for so long, obviously. The aim is to, to win by knockout or by points, but you always hope that the knockdown will be... I just failed to reach the count of 10 and that's it, but... Still looks wobbly on his feet, doesn't he, IET? But he's in the ring for the formality of the announcement. There it is, Okufoso Arsene, the African heavyweight champion, David IET, manages to give him a quick hug. IET climbs out of the ring, still looking quite dazed. Remained on the floor for a good minute or two after the knockdown, his second knockdown of the contest. But Foku Fosso Arsene is the African super heavyweight champion, plus 91 kilograms. And now he has a set, sight set, the World Championships in Hamburg at the end of August. That's all the men's finals dealt with. Now three women's finals, the three Olympic weight categories, starting with the women's flyweight final at 51 kilograms. Rumeysa Boualam of Algeria up against Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco. Just waiting for the two fighters to enter the arena after that stunning knockout victory for Foku Fosso Arsene of Cameroon in the men's super heavyweight division. There's our referee for the women's final from Turkey. And here come the fighters. Here's Rumeysa Boualam from Algeria. Had two fights to get here so far. She beat Juliana Kasonka of Zambia on a majority points decision before defeating Christine Ongare of Kenya. 5-0, all judges voting for her. 
A unanimous points decision. There is Rumesa Boalam of Algeria in the red. And up against her, Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco in the blue corner. Here comes Mutaki. Two wins, both by unanimous points decision. First over Beauty Fori of Botswana and then Asotia Rosette Ndongala of the Democratic Republic of Congo. This, the women's flyweight final, 51 kilogram division. There's Boalam in the, right, in the red corner. And in the blue corner, Yasmin Mutaki from Morocco. The first of three women's finals today. The referee just checking the head guard of Mutaki. Referee Berna Yurtseva from Turkey. Final words of instructions for both fighters. All North African clash this. Rumesa Boualam from Algeria in the red against Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco in the blue. And we're underway for the first of three three minute rounds. Boualam keeping the hands low. Lifted her guard somewhat. Mutaki just landed a short right in there. And she's got Boualem on the ropes already and already landing, making contact and hurting her opponent from Algeria. Good start from Mutaki, 20 seconds of round one. Boualem responds, but Mutaki definitely on top early on. Just looks the stronger. Bit of a shot to the back of the head, and I think the referee will have a word about that. Well, she has a word with the Algerian for a bit of holding. Boualem lands with a left. Mataki just leaving herself open. Mataki now just trying to see the opening. Bit of a, a wrestle there from Mataki. Sent Boualem towards the ropes. Now, have we lost a gum shield? No, oh, it's, it's a shoelace that needs retying, causing a delay. So Mataki in the neutral corner. Boualem just having a shoelace is tied. And then we can get back on with the action of halfway through this opening round. Boualam clear to continue. And Mataki lands a big left. Sends Boualam backwards. Boualam still keen to keep those hands low. Probably not the best idea. She's already been hurt. Referee. Asking Mataki just to mind the head. Mataki stalking her opponent, gets through again. Well, I'm trying to land on the counter, but the harder punch is being landed by Mutaki. Mutaki just turned 20 on, on Thursday. The younger of the two, a good right again from Mutaki. And a left on the retreat, flush into the side of the face of Boualam. Boualam doesn't seem to be offering too much here. Mataki sizing up her opponent. Trying to land another big shot. bit too exuberant there from Mutaki. Threw herself forward there. 
Got to be wary of being caught on the counter, but I think Mataki is in charge here, and another big right lands from the Moroccan. And that's the end of the first round. Not much doubt about who was on top there. Yasmin Mataki in the blue corner. Three minutes gone, six to go in this women's flyweight final. There is Ramesa Boalam. And there is Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco. Made a strong start to this fight. There's Boalem, 22 years old, the Algerian. She's going to have to buck up her ideas. If she's going to take gold here in Brazzaville, Congo. There's the bell for round two. Again, first punch landed by Mutaki, and again, landing of the left, wrestled to the ground by Boalam. All a bit, bit untidy at the start of this second round. <laughs> Mataki just a bit keen to get on with it for the referee's liking still well over two minutes left in this round plenty of time to get to work Boalan landed a little shot inside there and a good shot there from Boalan starting to show signs of getting into this fight a little bit of rough stuff there Definitely how Mutaki wants this fight. Mutaki just trying to bully her opponent. Another warning about the head for Boalam. Another stoppage. Boalam goes back to her corner. I'm not sure what it is this time. This time it's her shorts. Singlet back into the shorts. Bit of a breather. Won't do her any harm. But Mataki lines her up, catches her with the left. Another untidy wrestle. Another strong word from the Turkish referee to Boalam. Right over the top from Mataki scored. Both land punches there. But it's all very untidy in this second round. And another stoppage. I think it's a point deducted for holding, was it? Now, I think she's deducted a point from both fighters for persistent holding. I suppose that evens it up. First one deduction went to Mataki, and then she's just dished out one to Boalam. So, if she just, if this uh, round is judged even, it will be nine all. Ten seconds to go in round two of a really scrappy, messy round. A better round for Boalam. But uh, hard to say whether she's done enough to win it. But she has steadied the ship. She was rocked by a couple of big shots in the opening round. A bit better foot movement in that second round from Boalam, but... She goes into the final round with a chance. 
Taki with the first good shot of that exchange. But Alan fought back, then it all got a bit messy. And some words from the Algerian corner with the referee. Perhaps complaining about the point deduction. Now we're almost ready for the third and final round of this women's flyweight final between Ramesa Boualam of Algeria and Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco. Mutaki in the blue, Boualam in the red. Mutaki just getting through with a right over the top there. And again, and then again it gets a bit messy, but her knee hit the ground, that's why the referee's telling them to stop. Good short right there from Mutaki. Boualam responds. Mutaki trying to force her opponent back. Succeeding there. Warning about the head to Boualam. Not the first time. Boualam. Untidy punches, not hitting the target. It's a shame, it looked like a promising opening round from Mataki on the attack, and, but it has degenerated a bit since. Lots of clinching like this. And both fighters struggling to get off clean shots. Well, well, I'm gets through, but then Mataki lands with the counter and then trying to force her back. Left on the retreat there from Mutaki. Some better work from Boalam in this round, but. Little to choose between the pair in this final round. It's been a bit untidy, as I say. 45 seconds to go in round three. Boualam lands with a straight left. Again, they wrestle in the ring. Left on the retreat there from Mutaki. And again... First to the punch there, the Moroccan, and again. 20 seconds to go. This women's flyweight final. Mutaki makes Boala miss. And again, just roughing up her opponent, Mutaki. It's not been pretty, but that's the end of the fight. Mataki goes back to her corner. Boualem goes over to the Moroccan corner and congratulates them. They don't look too pleased in the Moroccan corner. Neither do the Algerians, and it suggests this could be tight on the judges' scored cards. Five judges at ringside. But no celebration from either camp at the end of those nine minutes. Wallam landing after missing with a wild shot. Wallam landing in that replay. Here comes the decision. Wallam in the red. Mutaki in the blue. Waiting for the verdict. Tense wait for both fighters. And for the trainers. 
Still we wait. Well, this is the longest wait we've had for a decision over the weekend. They're taking their time. Here it comes. And it goes to Boalam. Well, that's a surprise to me. No? No, I've a bit of confusion here. No, it's it's gone to Mataki. Well, Rouge was announced. Boalem was originally announced the winner. She raised her hand and then it transpires that Mataki had actually gained the decision. They took such a long time to announce the verdict and Boalem unsurprisingly leaves the rings in, ring in tears, thinking she had won the gold medal, but her joy was short-lived. It did take quite a while for that decision. It was originally announced that Boalem had been given it, but the verdict went to Mataki. Another gold for Morocco. Yasmin Mataki given the verdict from Rumesa Boalem of Algeria in the first of today's three women's finals at the African Championship. Next, the women's lightweight final, 60 kilograms, between Matshu Marcela Sakobi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Yetunda Odenuga from Nigeria. Both countries. Democratic Republic of Congo and Nigeria with their first finalists at these championships. Democratic Republic of Congo, of course, bordering the host nation, Congo. Seeing some highlights now from the previous fight, the women's flyweight final, won by the woman in blue, Yasmin Mutaki. Bit of confusion at the end there with the points decision, but Mataki getting the verdict. Here comes Matshu Marcelo Sakobi, the Democratic Republic of Congo. We expect some support for her, being from the neighbouring country. Just 21 years old, Sakobi. She makes her way to the ring. Two points victories on her way to the final, beating Mary, Mary Tu Diallo of Senegal with a unanimous points decision. And then in the semi-final, beating Huria Tricky of Algeria on a majority points decision. And this is her opponent, Yetunde Odenuga from Nigeria. Just 19 years old, Odenuga beat Kea Mugetse Kenusi of Botswana in her opening fight on a unanimous points decision and then defeated Chema Radi of Morocco. Three judges it scoring in her favour, one against, one scoring it a draw. So majority points decision in her semi-final. Both fighters with majority points verdicts in their semis and now this is the final. There is Odenuga in the blue from Nigeria. She's about to face off against Matshu Sakobi of the Democratic Republic of Congo. This the penultimate fight of the 2017 African Championships. There is Sakobi. The referee just having a final word with Odenuga, there's Alvin Finch from England. Just calling both fighters into the middle for some final words of instruction. 
before we get on with the first of three three-minute rounds here in the Gymnase Nicoloba in Brazzaville, Congo. There's the bell for the start of round one. Oh, big right there already from Sakobi. Both fighters throwing plenty of punches early on. There's a good shot from Odenuga. Good start to this fight. Odenuga trying to use the jab, but Sakobi just charging forward. Decent jab there from Sakobi. And then and again, Sakobi. Oh, good shot over the top there from Odenuga. Sakobi already demonstrated a decent jab. She was boxing after the referee had told them to break. And a good left there from Odenuga. Sakobi has got Odenuga backed up into the corner. A bit untidy there. I feel like Odenuga did land a couple of punches inside. Decent jab there from Odenuga then and again. Right over the top there from Sakobi. Scores. Can't really follow it up though. As Odenuga holds on. Sakobi, good right over the top from Sakobi. Looks pretty even this one so far. Just over a minute to go in the opening round. Sakobi so landing plenty of shots there. A couple of them were on the stretch. But the crowd appreciate it. Obviously cheering on the fighter from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Alvin Finch says break. Telling Odenuga. Warning her about the wrestling. Good right there from Sakobi. And she's pushing Odenuga back. Driving her back towards the ropes. Trying to land on the inside. Odenuga covers up. 15 seconds to go in this opening round of the women's lightweight final. Good jab from Sakobi. Just a bit quicker to that first punch. And that's the end of round one. And I think Sakobi took it. Good opening round, both fighters landing. Defense not the best from either. But Sakobi showed a decent jab and landed some nice rights over the top of the Odenuga defences. And I would have to give her the opening round. Still two rounds to go though, plenty to happen in this one. Looks like a decent crowd have stayed for the two women's, three women's finals here. Yesterday after the home heavyweight Pemba Rebecca, who went on to win gold today after he left, there was a mass exodus. And it was pretty quiet after that first heavyweight semi-final yesterday, but a decent crowd to see round two, the women's lightweight final. Between Matshu Sakobi in the red, from the Democratic Republic of Congo and Yetunde Odenuga of Nigeria in the blue. Both landing with jabs. Sakobe tries to follow up. And a good body shot That's from Sakobe, although referee Alvin Finch seemed to think might be a bit low. Odenuga with the jab there.
Odenuga gets through the guard with a couple of decent punches, lands to the body and then some big punches to the head and suddenly Sakobi's in trouble. Odenuga really getting through. Some powerful shots landing and Sakobi just needs a minute to clear her head. Odenuga can't wait to get back in there. Maybe sensing a finish. He's given a knockdown. Well, that's extraordinary. Odenuga's knee hit the deck. Sakobi landed while she was on the deck. Didn't look like a punch had caused her to hit the deck. I thought she just, she'd been wrestled to the deck, but now she's in real trouble as Sakobi pours forward. The crowd getting right behind the fighter from Democratic Republic of Congo. Odenuga still po throwing punches, still returning. But Sakobe on top, good left there, and then a good right in return from Sakobe. I wouldn't mind seeing that knockdown again. I thought it looked like more like a, a wrestle to the ground more than a punch. But he was given a knockdown and that almost certainly makes it a 10-8 round. More good punching from Sakobi. Swaying out of the way of Odenuga's punches. Good left there, stiff left from Odenuga. Trying to land with the uppercut inside. Referee having a word with Odenuga. And with Sakobi, 10 seconds to go in round two. Good right landed there by Odenuga on the retreat. And that's the end of round two. A knockdown for this woman here, Matsu Sakobi. Although at the time, I thought Odenuga had been wrestled to the floor rather than punched. The referee Alvin Finch deemed it a knockdown. And that means Sakobi is in control of this contest going into the final round. The women's lightweight final. A leg rub for Matsu Sakobi before the final three minutes of this penultimate final of the 2017 African Championships. Sakobi already up on her feet. That still needs to come out of the ring, though. That's still, that's still still in the ring. And on we go. The start of round three. Reldenuga lands with a sharp jab early on, both landing with jabs. And Sakobi forcing her opponent back. And she's charging after her and connecting with great accuracy and power. Odenuga doesn't look to have been too ruffled by that, but scoring punches anyhow. Moving Sakobi further ahead. Odenuga is going to need something to turn this fight around. A minute gone in this final round. And Sakobi making Odenuga miss. Odenuga needs to attack more if she's going to turn this around. But Sakobi seems to be landing the more powerful punches. Odenuga did land there, but I think Sakobi came off slightly better. And even though Odenuga's going forward, Sakobi seems to be just landing the better punches. I think both fighters getting a bit tired, resulting in some ragged boxing. Sakobi with the right over the top and then a quick left. 
through the guard. Good footwork from Sekobi. Nice jab again from Sekobi. Although she got caught there by Odenuga. Got to be careful, Odenuga having some success. That was a good right from Odenuga. And that hurt the boxer from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Just over 30 seconds to go. You'd think Sekobi has done enough, but Odenuga still landing. And Sekobi leaving her chin exposed. A tense finish to this one, 15 seconds to go in the final round. Just 10 seconds now, good punching from Sakobi through the guard once again. And that's the end of the fight. Odenuga raises her hand, as does Sakobi. And the reaction in the red corner probably gives you more of an indication as to who's won. Pretty subdued in the Nigerian corner. And there, Machu Sakobi blowing heavily after that fight. Both fighters gave it everything. But Danuga thinks she's won. She looks very pleased. Not the impression I got from the nine minutes of boxing there, but they both go into the middle and await the decision. After which Alvin Finch will raise one of their hands to signify the gold medalist in the lightweight division. Mutual respect there before the verdict. Both fighters looking confident that they've got the verdict. And again, a bit of a delay. Before the announcement of the decision. We had a lengthy delay for the last one. Here it comes. And it's gone to Sakobi. Gold for the Democratic Republic of Congo. Odenuga looks disappointed. But there's your gold medalist. Clearly delighted. The anguish for Yetunde Odenuga. I thought she needed to, to attack more in that final round. And the judges thought the same. But there is the women's lightweight champion. The African champion, Matsu Marcella Sakobi. She's chaired away from the ring. Plenty of support for her in the crowd as she acknowledges them. She is the African champion. <laughs> and some <laughs> great celebrations with the crowd. She's delighted. And rightly so, she's the African champion. African women's lightweight champion. And now to the final bout of these AFBC African Boxing Championships. The women's middleweight final. There is Amina Etir from Morocco. Turned 30 earlier this month. She's in the red corner. Majority points decision in her semi-final, beating Jorbel Malewu Tekasala in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Up against her, she makes her way to the ring at here. Up against her is Clotilde Essian from Cameroon. Cameroon on top of the medals table. Could be another goal for them. waiting for Essian to enter the arena. There is a tier. This, the middleweight final, 75 kilogram division. Etia 
in the ring. And Essian already in the ring. There she is, Clotilde Essian. In her semi-final, she won a unanimous points verdict over Kenya's Elizabeth Akinyi. Cameroon, dominant nation at these African championships. Already got two women's golds. And Essian hoping to make it a third. But up against her, Amina Etir from Morocco. Trying to make it two Moroccan golds, two Moroccan women's golds this afternoon. Both fights in the middle of the ring. Quite a significant height advantage for the woman from Cameroon. So you'd think she'd be looking to use her jab and try and keep a tear at range. And again, straight from the start, she lands with a stiff left jab and then a short right. A tear charging forward, but she's getting caught as she comes in. A tear bustling forward. And Essian landing with the jab and using that jab very effectively early on. And I think Atiyah might be a bit wary about charging forward if she's going to get caught with those. She is landing some counter punches, the Moroccan, but now Essian sending her backwards. 45 seconds gone to the opening round and already Essian looking in control, using that long jab, that long reach to her advantage. Now Etier, she had backed her up, but Essian comes back strongly and a good body shot from Essian. Jab again from Essian. Quite clear what her tactics are to keep the Moroccan at range. Doing so effectively. Striking well with the right on the back foot. And again, and I think Etier is going to be in a bit of a trouble shortly. There's another big left and a right. And the referee steps in to give a standing eight count. Midway through the opening round, and Etier takes a standing eight count. On we go, but Essian could be looking to finish this in the opening round. Etier, much more reticent about coming forward, and understandably so, she's felt the power of Essian. She has backed her opponent up here. Gets through with the left, bit of a combination from Etier. This is better from the Moroccan. Bit untidy. There's a tear, bit of holding from her, and then a hit. Quick word from the referee. Essian gets to work again. And that reach is proving decisive in this fight. There's another standing eight count. And I'm not sure this is going to go on much longer. And the referee might be thinking you're calling it off. Etier continues, but you feel one big shot might finish it. She might run out of time in this round, though. Just under 10 seconds to go. Etier landing a couple of shots. But Essian, again, that left doing the damage. And there's the end of round one. Etier survives. But she's got a mountain to climb now. Excellent first round from Clotilde Essian from Cameroon, the 31-year-old. There's Amina Etier. She took two standing eight counts in that opening round. And she looks a little disheartened. Took some really powerful punches in that first round. Credit to her for staying on her feet. She's got to change her game plan. Words of advice from the corner. 
trying to tell her to somehow get inside that reach. That's the danger. She has been picked off, particularly by that left jab. And a bit of a delay at the start of the second round. Uh, the shorts. A bit of string coming from the shorts, so that needs to be tucked back in. And on we go with round two. Amina Etia of Morocco in the red, up against Clotilde Essian of Cameroon in the blue. Essian dominating the first round. And Essia trying to get inside the guard, having a bit of success, but she is getting caught. And now Essian sends her backwards. And Essie Etia in trouble again. And here's another standing out eight count. Essia goes back. Essian goes back to her neutral corner as Atia, Atia takes her third standing count of the contest. She's allowed to continue. Still plenty of time in this round for a finish. Good uppercut from Essian. Through with the jab once more and again. Misses with the right over the top, but another right lands flash on Etia's face. They're swinging wildly, both of them. But it's Essian who's landing. Etia holds on. A brave effort from the Moroccan. But she's been outclassed and outgunned so far. Essian just looking to pick the punch. There it is, the right over the top once more. There's another combination. And again, this could be it. Deep trouble now for Etier, and it's another standing eight count. She must be on borrowed time. The referee ends it, that's it. He's seen enough, a fourth standing eight count. And that is the end of the contest. Clotilde Essian, a dominant performance to take gold in the women's middleweight at these African Championships. Very useful fighter, clearly. Excellent jab, followed it up well. Some tears of joy there for Essian. She is the African champion and she can scarcely believe it. Overcome with emotion. Second round stoppage and yet another gold medal for Cameroon, kissing the guns there. Delighted with that win. She goes back to the middle of the ring for the formality of the announcement. Lothilde Essian win by stoppage in the second round. And yet another gold medal for Cameroon. Three women's goals. For the West African nation who topped the medals table at these 2017 African Championships. Hope to run through all the results with you shortly. But that is your final gold medalist at these African Championships, Clotilde Essian of Cameroon. Victory in the 75 kilogram weight division. And that concludes the action here in Brazzaville, Congo. Run you through some of the results. From earlier, we started off with a men's flyweight, light flyweight contest. Gold for Namibia and Matthias Hamaniella. Unanimous points decision over Fotsala Simplice of Cameroon. And the men's flyweight, gold for Algeria, Mohamed Flisi. The number one seed. Beating Otakiche Rajab Mohamed. Defending champion retaining his crown, Flisi. The men's flyweight and the bantamweight, Jean Jordi Vadamutu, gold for Mauritius, 
beating Jeffrey Kakato of Uganda. And then the men's lightweight, Reda Ben Baziz, went down. A surprise. Ben Baziz, the defending champion, lost out on a split decision to Kenya's Nick Okot in that men's lightweight final. The men's light, light welterweight final went to Namibia as well. Second goal for Namibia, Jonas Junias Jonas against Eslam Mohamed of Egypt, the top seed. Jonas, to my eyes anyway, the, the fighter of this tournament, the Namibian, and he took light welterweight gold. Mervyn Clare lost out in the final of the men's welterweight to Muzamir Kakande of Uganda, a split decision for Kakande, King Kong winning gold for Uganda in the welterweight. Then in the middleweight, no contest. We're waiting for official confirmation of that. But uh, Hossam Abdin, the top seed against Juadon Wilfried Sayan Senge. I believe Sayan Senge has been awarded the contest, awarded the gold medal by way of walkover. Men's light heavyweight, another gold for Cameroon. Yombo Ulrich winning with a first round stoppage against Chuaib. Uadi. And then the men's heavyweight contest went to the home favourite, Laurie Pembu at Becker. He was originally the loser of the fight. Abu Hamda Abdel Jalil Abu Hamda was given a unanimous points decision originally, but then the decision was reversed. And Pembu at Becker got it, and he wins the gold medal. And then the super heavyweight final, the most spectacular finish of the day. Foku Foso Arsen with a first round knockout of David Aiti of Uganda. He knocked him down within the first 30 seconds and then he knocked him down again at the end of the first round. And Aiti was not going to get up from that. Cameroon topping the medals table at the end of the 2017 African Boxing Championships. I've been Rory Jawani. Hope you've enjoyed the coverage from Brazzaville. And hope you join us again soon on Olympic Channel. Garant des us, le coup